Welcome, my name is Pastor Scotty Bockhaus, and we thank you for taking some time to listen to some audio recordings from the pulpit of the Riverview Baptist Church. Our desire is to show the Lord high, holy, and lift it up, as well as try to be a blessing to those through the Word of God. Please enjoy this message, and we pray that it will be a blessing to your life. And if you wouldn't mind to take your copy of the Word of God and turn with me to the Old Testament book of Isaiah. The Old Testament book of Isaiah in Isaiah chapter number 65. Isaiah in chapter number 65. We're doing a very special message tonight on the Millennial Kingdom. Of course, the Millennial Kingdom is a time where Jesus Christ is going to come and to rule and reign. And there is so much said about the Millennial Kingdom. And we wanted to be an encouragement to you tonight and show you about this wonderful place that is recorded in the book of Isaiah chapter number 65. Isaiah in chapter number 65. And if you wouldn't mind, let's look together starting at verse number 18. Isaiah chapter 65 and verse number 18. Notice what the Word of God says. Isaiah 65 and verse 18. But be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing and her people a joy. And I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people. And the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her, nor the voice of crying. There shall be no more thence an infant of days, nor an old man that hath not filled his days. For a young child shall die a hundred years old, but the sinner being a hundred years old shall be accursed. And they shall build houses and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build and inhabit another, they shall not plant and eat and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people, and mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth for trouble, for they are the seed of of the blessing of the Lord and their offspring with him. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together, and the lion shall eat straw like the bullock, and the dust shall be like the serpent's meat, and they shall not hurt nor destroy. And all my holy mountain saith, the Lord. And if you're the habit of marking things in your Bible, would you mark a phrase that we find in the book of Isaiah in chapter number 65? The book of Isaiah in chapter number 65, and notice with me in verse number 18. Isaiah chapter 65 and verse 18. Notice the phrase, be ye glad and rejoice forever. Be ye glad and rejoice forever forever. And with the Lord's help, as we hit this millennial kingdom passage, we could see as God is telling and giving an order, giving instructions about this wonderful time that it is described here, be ye glad and rejoice forever. If you don't mind, let's go to the Lord together and let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you again for the great privilege of being in your house to be able to open up your word and to be able to explore it. Lord, there is so much that can be said concerning the millennial kingdom. I'm asking that you would give us special wisdom and discernment now just to be able to direct and just be able to give something to be an encouragement to these good folks tonight, that you would be a blessing to everyone that hears, that you would point them up to you and give us something to rejoice that you have prophesied for, something that we can look for to ourselves, and that we can even enjoy and rejoice in it now, just knowing that it is coming. Again, with a message like this, I recognize I need your help. So the best I know how, once again, I ask that you that you fill me with your precious spirit. I surrender myself to you. Ask that you use this in a special way that I couldn't even dream of because we could trust your word. Help these good folks tonight, Lord. Encourage them. Let them rejoice in what you have planned for them. And in your name we pray. pray. Amen. Well, of course, as I said before, this is what we call a millennial kingdom passage. The millennial kingdom 
is a term that we use to refer to when Jesus Christ comes down and he comes upon this earth and he rules and reigns on this earth for one thousand years. And when he rules and reigns on this earth, things are going to be quite a bit different, whether it's the conditions of the earth and nature itself, or even the conditions of the people themselves, which is the emphasis that Isaiah chapter 65 is placing on dealing with the conditions for the people during the millennial kingdom. And if you wouldn't mind, I'd like to walk through this passage and then pull some other passages to reinforce what is being taught to get us an idea, a picture in our head of what this thousand year reign of Christ will deal with. Now again, there are more passages dedicated to the millennial kingdom reign, the thousand year reign of Christ towards the end of time than any other subject in the Bible except for the tabernacle and temple. The Bible has placed great emphasis and has taken many chapters and many passages where it describes and dedicates uh, time to this subject. So if you don't mind, we're just going to take a few passages based off of Isaiah 65 and we'll walk through and be encouraged ourselves. The very first thing I'd like to show you here is that it will be a place of rejoicing. It will be a place of of rejoicing. Again, the emphasis we're placing here, as it says in Isaiah chapter 65 and verse 18, but be glad and rejoice forever. This place is going to be a place where we can rejoice. It is what we're headed to. It is what we're looking forward to. It is going to be a place of rejoicing. It's going to be a place of victory. It's going to be a place where God has fulfilled his promises. Now in Isaiah 65, it is specifically dealing with the context of of the Hebrew people. And one of the reasons why they'll be able to rejoice and be glad in it is that God is finally completing his promises, fulfilling the prophecies that he has made towards the Hebrew people. Now, in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 65, is dealing with the context in the sight of the world right now, is that the Assyrian people have come and taken the northern kingdom of Samaria away and 722 BC. It's not going to be too long before the Babylonian Empire rises up and it destroys the southern kingdom in 586 BC. And so with the Hebrew people uh, surrounded by enemies, some of them already been taken by the enemies, they have to look forward to something. Right now they're in a time of uh, disheaval, a time where their kingdom is tore up. But yet God has made promises to the Hebrew people. And so this passage is meant to encourage them that the best days are still ahead. Yes, the world seems like it's falling apart now. Yes, it does seem like things are going crazy. That there's consequences for sin. Their country is falling apart. But yet the best days are still ahead and that they could be glad and rejoice that God has fulfilled the promises he made to those people. Notice again in verse 18, but be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. Remember, this is the Lord that's speaking, that which I create for behold, I create Jerusalem, a rejoicing and her people a joy and I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy with my people and the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her nor the voice of crying. Again as you study the millennial kingdom passages throughout scripture one of the themes that you'll find in these passages is a reason to rejoice, a reason to celebrate that God has fulfilled his promises, that God has triumphed, and that there is victory because of Jesus Christ. And it will be a time where the people can rejoice that their government is correct. Jesus Christ is going to be king. He's going to have a perfect government. It's a time that they could see that there is a peace. There is a time where once again they're prosperous. There are many reasons why they should rejoice. 
And we're going to cover some of these reasons here in just a bit. But it is going to be a time of rejoicing. Well, Isaiah 65 is not the only passage that deals with the rejoicing. If you don't mind, let's explore some other things in the book of Isaiah that describes the rejoicing they'll have during this time of the millennial kingdom. Notice with me, if you don't mind, in the book of Isaiah chapter number 14. The book of Isaiah chapter number 14. And notice with me, if you wouldn't mind, in Isaiah 14. And notice in verse number 7. Isaiah 14 in verse number 7, the Bible says this, The whole earth is at rest and is quiet. They break forth into singing. Again, this is a millennial kingdom passage and it's talking about the earth is at rest. And because it is at rest, everything is quiet. And now they can sing that God has given peace and it gives them a time of rejoicing. Notice with me in the book of Isaiah chapter number 25. The book of Isaiah chapter number 25. Now remember, some people refer to Isaiah as the gospel record of Isaiah because it speaks so much about Jesus Christ. And it looks forward to both of his comings. Not only when Jesus Christ came on the earth the first time to die on the cross of Calvary for both you and for me, but it also looks forward to when Jesus Christ comes back the second time. And there's a great emphasis on Jesus Christ's earthly ministry both the first time and the second time. And so all throughout the book of Isaiah there are tons of millennial kingdom passages that are talking about Jesus Christ's rule and reign and what to look forward to. Notice with me in Isaiah 25. Isaiah 25, notice with me starting at verse 8. Isaiah 25 and verse 8. He will swallow up death in victory and the Lord will wipe away tears from off all faces. And the rebuke of his people shall he take away from all the earth for the Lord hath spoken it. And it shall be said in that day, lo, this is our God. We have waited for him. He will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him and we will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Remember the millennial kingdom is a time where God fulfills the promises that we're looking forward to. It is a time of rejoicing. Notice with me in Isaiah 35. Isaiah chapter 35 and notice with me in verse number 10. Isaiah 35 and verse number 10 the word of God says this and the ransom of the Lord shall return and come with Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads and and they shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Once again, Isaiah 35 is a millennial kingdom passage. And it's talking about this great song of victory that the people will return to Zion, to Jerusalem with songs and everlasting joy on their head. And they shall obtain joy and gladness. You see, this time of the millennial kingdom is going to be a great time of rejoicing. It's going to be a great time of gladness. Now, what specifically makes this time a time of rejoicing and gladness? Well, notice with me back in Isaiah 65. Isaiah 65, and we see something else here, especially an encouragement to the Hebrew people. The second thing I want to show you here is that Jerusalem will be the capital. Jerusalem will be the capital. Now that's referring to the capital of the world. That the headquarters of Jesus Christ where he rules and reigns is going to be from Jerusalem. Notice what Isaiah 65 says about this subject. Isaiah 65 and notice with me in verse 18. But be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold I create Jerusalem a rejoicing and her people a joy, and I will rejoice in Jerusalem, and joy in my people, and the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her, nor the voice of crying. Here it's placing a special emphasis on Jerusalem, and there are many passages that speak about Jerusalem being the capital of the world, but this is especially encouraging for the Hebrew people to have the Jerusalem, the place of God, the city of God, ruling over everything. We know that Jerusalem for thousands of years has been in turmoil and fights. That even today there is still uprisings. There is still strife over Jerusalem and that entire land. 
But during the millennial kingdom, not only will the land be at peace, but Jerusalem will be elevated above all the cities of the world and will be a place where Jesus rules and reigns. Notice, if you don't mind, let me show you another passage. There are tons of passages, but sticking with the book of Isaiah, notice with me at the beginning of Isaiah, Isaiah in chapter 2. Isaiah in chapter number 2. And notice what the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 2. And let's pick it up starting at verse 1. Isaiah chapter 2 and verse 1. The word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow Unto it, and many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his path. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. And nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. What we see here is not only is Jerusalem going to be elevated to a place of prominence, but also because Jesus Christ is ruling and reigning from the capital of Jerusalem, that there's going to be peace in all the nations, not just Jerusalem and Judea, but all nations will have peace. No wonder this is a time of great rejoicing and great gladness because it's going to be a time of peace as Jesus cruel Christ rules and reigns from Jerusalem. Why else is it that people are to be glad and rejoice forever? What makes this millennial kingdom a place of rejoicing? Well, there's another thing I'd like to show you from Isaiah 65. Isaiah 65. And I want to show you and show uh, from not only here from the Bible that people will live a thousand years. That people will live a thousand years. Notice with me in Isaiah 65. Notice in verse 20. Isaiah 65 in verse 20. And there shall come no more thence an infant of days, nor an old man that hath not fulfilled his days. For the child shall die a hundred years old, but the sinner being a hundred years old shall be accursed. Here in Isaiah 20, it's using poetical language to try to describe that ages are going to work a little bit differently because there's going to be a longer lifespan. Notice in verse number 22 as it backs up that idea that they shall not build nor inhabit, they shall not plant or eat another, for, the, for as the days of a tree are the days of my people. Here it's using another poetic figurative language to try to explain. Just like trees can live such a long time, the people are going to live such a long time. Well, you know, the Bible gives more clarity on this in the book of Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20, Revelation, the last book of the Bible. And of course, it puts a lot of emphasis on future things. And Isaiah chapter, or Revelation chapter 20, it speaks about the millennial ki kingdom in a very clear, precise way. Notice with me in the book of Revelation chapter 20 and verse 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he lay a hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years shall be fulfilled. And after that he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones and they that sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, which had not worshiped the beast, neither his image, nor had received the mark on their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him 
a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. In Revelation chapter number 20, in seven verses, six times it makes reference to a thousand years. Now, I believe we have a God who says what he means and means what he says. And so if he says a thousand years so many times, you want to know what I think how long the millennial kingdom is going to be? A thousand years. And in this passage, it speaks about that the people there are going to live a thousand years. And they're going to rule and reign with Jesus Christ. And there's going to be people that are going to live there for a thousand years years. No wonder that this is a place of rejoicing. This is a place where we could uh, be glad and rejoice forever. We're turning back to Revelation 20 in just a second or in just a little bit, but turn back with me to Isaiah 65 and let's go back from this passage and see something else. Why is it during the millennial reign, the thousand year reign where Jesus Christ rules and reigns from this earth, why is it the Bible declares that we can rejoice and be glad forever? What is it that causes this to have such excitement and such rejoicing? Well, notice with me back in the book of Isaiah 65, and we can see another thing here. It will be a place of economic prosperity. It will be a place of economic prosperity prosperity. Notice with me back in Isaiah chapter 65 and notice in verse 21. And they shall build houses and inhabit them and they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them and they shall not build and inhabit and another inhabit, meaning that they're not going to build up so someone else can live in my house. I'm building up my house so I can live in it. They shall not plant and another eat. So the crops and the work that I have I get to enjoy. They don't go to another person. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people, and mine elect shall enjoy, long enjoy the work of their hands. Again, it's talking about the things that I do. I get to enjoy. They're not going to go to someone else. I get to enjoy the fruits of my labor. Notice verse 23. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth for trouble, for they are the seed of the blessed Lord and their offspring with them. Again, this is talking about an economic prosperity. There are many other passages that speak about the same idea, but it is a place that you're not going to worry about how am I going to pay the bills? How am I going to get this taken care of? Uh, working so hard so someone else could get my paycheck. It's going to be a time of economic prosperity and the people are going to enjoy the fruit of their labor. And that is another reason why during this time that we could be glad and rejoice forever. Notice something else that we find in the book of Isaiah chapter 65. Isaiah 65 that we could see another reason why we could be glad and rejoice forever is that we'll see that the people will be able to reproduce. They're going to be able to have children. Notice with me as we look in verse number 23. Isaiah 65 and verse 23. And they shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth trouble, for they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord, and their offspring with them. Now, this is very interesting, because according to the Bible, we're going to have three different groups of people that are concerning with the millennial kingdom. If you don't mind, hold your finger here and turn back with me to the book of Revelation chapter 20. And let me explain this a little bit further, dealing with the three groups of people that we're going to find in the millennial kingdom. Now, the first group of people that we have in the millennial kingdom are those with resurrected bodies. Those with the resurrected bodies. Now, what this is referring to, notice with me in the book of Revelation chapter 20. Notice with me in verse number 4. And I saw the thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. So these are people that have been dead. When you get beheaded, that usually means that you died. Something happened. They were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither received the mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ, a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first 
resurrection on the such that second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. What this passage is speaking about here is that all of us who live in this time now, that when we die or we are here for the rapture, the Bible speaks about that we're going to get brand new bodies. And these brand new resurrected bodies will no longer be able to sin against God anymore. We have another message that deals with the specifics of this. And the Bible speaks about this. But we're going to be part of what is called the first resurrection. Meaning that Jesus Christ is going to have all those, as the book of First Thessalonians say, that those that are dead in Christ shall rise up and those that are alive and remain shall meet them together in the air. Oh, we're looking forward to that time of the first resurrection. Now, the thing about the first resurrection is with our redeemed bodies, we will not be able to have children. That this is our time of having children. But there is another group of people who are going to enter into the book of uh, into the millennial kingdom, this thousand year reign of Christ. And those are the people who survive the tribulation. Remember the next event on God's calendar is what we would call the rapture. And the rapture is where God calls away everyone who's accepted Jesus as their savior. Now during the next event, which would be the tribulation, God is primarily once again dealing with the Hebrew people to draw them to himself. And during that time, there's going to be a great persecution upon the Hebrew people the like which the world has never seen. But many of the Hebrew people are going to accept Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, and they are going to live past the tribulation and enter into the millennial kingdom still with their natural bodies. And with their natural bodies, they will be able to have children, which brings us to the third group of people, the people who are born in the millennial kingdom. Those people are going to be born in the millennial kingdom. They'll know nothing of this world. They'll always know as King Jesus and this perfect government. But they will have to accept Jesus as their personal savior because they're going to enter into this world with the same body that you and I have and still with the same sin nature. Notice what the Bible says concerning this. Dealing, <coughs> excuse me, uh, in uh, verse number seven. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather together, the number of whom is the sand of the sea. And they went up to the breadth of the earth and compassed about the camps of the saints and the beloved city, Jerusalem, and the fire came from heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them were cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and false prophet are. And they shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Well, in this passage here, it speaks about that those people who are born in the millennial kingdom, they're going to have to accept Jesus Christ as their savior. But what we're learning here is that the people who come through the tribulation, again, Isaiah 65 is dealing with the Hebrew people. So as the Hebrew people survive the tribulation, they do not die. They're going to enter into the millennial kingdom and they will be able to have children who will live during that thousand year reign of Christ. They'll be able to have children during that time. And of course children are always a reason to rejoice and to be glad. Notice if you don't mind as we go back to Isaiah 65. We could see something else. Why is it that we could be glad and rejoice during this thousand year reign of Christ? Why is it that it should bring joy to us? Knowing that we're going to go to this place one day. Well, notice with me if we continue in Isaiah 65. And notice with me in verse number 24. Isaiah 65 in verse 24, the Bible says this. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking... I will hear. Notice this pronoun I. The I here is referring to God. This is being spoke to God's perspective to the Hebrew people. And he's giving them a promise that during the millennial kingdom, that before you even think it, I know. Before you finish saying it, I've already heard. And God will answer the prayers. 
Oh, what an encouragement to know at that time that God is still hearing and answering prayers. That it's still a place that is, he is ruling and reigning on the throne in Jerusalem. He is still God over all and answering prayers and rejoicing it. And knows what we need before we can even ask. No wonder we could rejoice and be glad in it. We could rejoice forever. We could be glad forever during that time. Knowing that there's a God who's still able to hear and answer prayers. Notice as we still continue on in the book of Isaiah 65. Speaking that we could rejoice and be glad forever. Why is it during the millennial kingdom that we could rejoice and be glad? Well notice that it's also a place of peace. It will be a place of peace. Notice with me in verse 25. Isaiah 65 and verse number 25. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. Now here are two classic animals that are usually enemies. We've all seen cartoons of the wolf trying to go get the lamb, trying to get a hold of the sheep. But here it's saying that during this time there's going to be such peace that the wolf and the lamb are going to eat together and the wolf is not eating the lamb at this time. Notice as it goes on, verse 25, the wolf and the lamb shall feed together and the lion shall eat straw like the bullock. Now we've all seen the nature shows of the lion in the middle of the Serengeti reap, uh, jumping and leaping and pouncing on that ox that's all by itself. Well, here in the millennial kingdom, it says the lion is going to eat right beside the ox and the lion's not going to be eating the ox, but is going to be eating just like the ox. Notice this. And the dust shall be the serpent's meat. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, saith the Lord. Here it's talking about even nature is going to be at peace. And the people are going to be at peace. And it's going to be a place where you don't even have to be afraid of the animals. You don't even have to be afraid of the snake. Of course, many of you are not fond of snakes. If we had a snake and said, would you like to pet the snake? Many of you would pass. You don't want to handle snakes. You don't want to play with the snakes. But in the millennial kingdom, you don't have to be afraid of the spiders you don't have to be afraid of the snakes. You don't have to be afraid of any God's creatures because it will all be at peace. You know, the Bible places a great emphasis, especially throughout the book of Isaiah, speaking about this millennial kingdom and putting emphasis that it will be a place of peace. If you wouldn't mind, let's look at a couple passages in Isaiah just to emphasize this. Notice with me in Isaiah chapter 2. Isaiah chapter 2. As we look in the book of Isaiah, all the way at the beginning, Isaiah chapter 2, notice with me in verse 4. And he shall judge among the nations, and shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. And nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. That during this time of the millennial kingdom, it's going to be a time of peace. Notice with me in Isaiah chapter number 11. Isaiah chapter number 11. Notice with me in verses 6. Starting at verse number 6. Isaiah 11 and verse number 6. And the wolf shall also dwell with the lamb. And the leopard shall lie down with the kid. And the calf and the young lion and the fatling together. And a little child shall lead them. Again, look at these animals again. A wolf with a lamb. The leopard down with a kid like a goat. And the calf and the young lion and the fatling together. And then just to add to it to show this picture of peace. A little child can lead them. Every child's always wanted a pet lion. Or a pet dinosaur. Who knows what's going to be there. But you don't have to worry about the child playing with the snakes. You don't have to worry about the, uh, kid, uh, the, the wolf uh, not eating your little child. Notice in verse 7. And the cow and the bear shall feed. And their young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. And the suckling child shall play on the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall place his hand on the cockatrice den. So can you can imagine a child, a little infant, playing over where the snakes live at? And yet you don't have to be worried about it because the snake is not going to hurt the child. That even nature itself is going to be at peace. Notice as it goes on. Isaiah chapter number 32. Isaiah chapter number 32. 
Again, no wonder we have an opportunity to rejoice and be glad forever. Isaiah 32, and notice with me in verse 17. Isaiah 32 and verse 17. And the work of righteousness shall be peace. And the effect of righteousness, quietness and assurance forever. And my people shall dwell in a peaceful peaceable habitation, and in sure dwellings, and in quiet resting places. Again, the Bible here is placing emphasis that in the millennial kingdom, it's going to be a place of peace, not only with nation against nation, but there's going to be peace with nature itself. No wonder this is a time that we could rejoice and be glad in it. So with all of this, we're talking about something in the future, something we can look forward to. That brings me to a natural question. If this is a place where we'll be glad and rejoice forever, are you going? Are you going? If you don't know for sure that your sins are forgiven, let me tell you that Jesus has already paid the price for you and that you could be, have peace with God from the God of peace. And he wants you to know for sure that your sins are forgiven. That's the requirement for going into the millennial kingdom. Is to have your sins forgiven by the Lord Jesus Christ. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish. But have everlasting life. Let me tell you dear friend. You are not at peace with God. Because of your sins. That because of your sins you owe God a great debt. And the only way to have peace with God is to have your sins forgiven by the shed blood of Jesus Christ. And you too can rejoice and be glad forever when your debt is paid. But not only that, for those who do know for sure that Jesus Christ is your Savior, and we've talked about what a wonderful place this is. It's a place of peace. It's a place of prosperity. It's a place where the people are going to rejoice. There's going to be some people who are going to be able to have children. It's going to be a wonderful place for a thousand years. The other question I want to ask you is, who are you bringing with you? Who are you bringing with you? Notice with me in the book of Isaiah chapter 51. Isaiah in chapter number 51. Notice with me in Isaiah 51 and notice with me in verse number 11. Isaiah 51 and verse 11. Therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing unto Zion. And an everlasting joy shall be upon their head. And they shall obtain gladness and joy and sorrow and sorrow. And mourning shall flee away. Let me tell you, there's going to be a time where those who are redeemed in the Lord, that word redeemed means that we have been purchased with his blood. He has paid the price for us. And because of that, we are going to go with rejoicing and singing to this capital city to go to see our wonderful Savior. And we will be rejoicing and we will be at peace. And by the way, why don't you bring a friend? If you know someone that doesn't know Jesus Christ as their Savior, wouldn't you be heartbroken if they didn't show up with you? Wouldn't you be heartbroken to look around and find out that one of your friends, one of your family members weren't there rejoicing with you? Let me tell you that you have the responsibility and the opportunity to tell others how they can know for sure that they're going to this wonderful place. This is why the Bible places a great emphasis on describing the millennial kingdom because it's something we need to look forward to, but also look forward to others being with us. Notice one last passage, if you don't mind. Again, there are so much spoken about from the book of Isaiah dealing with the millennial kingdom just passage after passage after passage but one last thing is we're talking about that we want to bring people with us notice with me in the book of Isaiah 42 Isaiah 42 and notice with me in verse number five Isaiah 42 and verse five thus saith God the Lord he that created the heavens and stretched them out. He that spread forth the earth and that which cometh out of it. He that giveth breath unto the people upon it. And the spirit to them that walk therein. I the Lord have called thee in righteousness and will keep and will hold thy hand and will keep thee and give thee for a covenant of the people. Notice this. For a light of the Gentiles. 
to open the blind eye, to bring out the prisoners from the prison, and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. I am the Lord. That is my name. And my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. As I said before, the book of Isaiah chapter 65 is primarily giving the promises to the Hebrew people and letting them know some of the things that they're going to enjoy. But I want to remind you that God is not just open it up to the Hebrew people. But to those who are not Hebrews, that's what the Bible means by Gentiles. Anybody who is not Hebrew people, God has opened it up for everyone to enjoy. So it doesn't matter who you are or where you're from. It doesn't matter where you call your culture. It doesn't matter where you call home. It doesn't matter what your background is. If you are a person, then let me tell you that God is wants you there. He wants you to enjoy these promises. And if you don't know for sure that Jesus Christ is your personal Savior, let me tell you, this promise is for you. And He wants you to know. And dear friend, that if you know Jesus Christ as your Savior, it doesn't matter who it is. You are to invite everyone. God wants to see everyone there. No wonder we could talk about this millennial kingdom and that we can rejoice and be glad forever. Thank you for listening to this audio message. This is Pastor Scotty Bockhaus, and I encourage you to take this information that you just received and make a specific decision to follow after the Lord. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, let me beg you to take the time to receive Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. If you are saved, I encourage you to make a decision in your life to help you get closer with the Lord. If there's anything specific we can do to be a blessing or to pray for you, we encourage you. Look us up on the internet at riverviewbc.com. Once again, that's riverviewbc.com. Or if you would prefer to call us, you can give us a call at area code 920 Five three zero six three zero eight. Once again, that number is nine two zero five three zero six three zero eight. If there's anything we can do to be a blessing or an encouragement to you, please let us know. We would love to make ourselves available. Thank you.